Welcome to the Modern CPA Success Show, where we're 100% focused on helping accounting firms achieve success. If you're an accounting firm owner who wants to learn how to provide virtual CFO services, then this podcast is for you. Welcome to episode nine of the podcast. Today, um, we are joined by our director of marketing, Kelly Shukneck, and of course, Adam Hale is joining us once again, and we are going to talk about marketing. So it's awesome to have a marketing person here and to actually have a marketing person within our accounting firm. It's really helped us grow. It's helped us do a lot of things better and obviously grown a lot of attention to the firm. And I am um, in this role of doing podcasting. I obviously work with uh, Kelly a lot. So I'm excited to get her on the podcast. Finally, it was it was tough to get her here. But now that she's here, I'm sure everybody will be entertained by her. So uh, Kelly, if you want to start off with a quick introduction of you and your background, it'd be great to hear. Yeah. So I'm Kelly Chuk- Neck. <laughs> She can't even um, say her last name. <laughs> I was like, should I say it the way Jamie said it or should I say it the way I say it? Um, I my, it also, my husband says it a different way. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a tough one. So I'm Kelly Suknecht. I'm the director of marketing at Summit. I've been here for um, about a year and a half. My background actually was in publishing and worked kind of in publishing and book marketing. And I actually worked with Jody on his first book, which is what brought me to Summit. Awesome. Great. So um, tell us about a normal day for you at Summit. And I know a normal day is it's hard to answer when you work at Summit, but tell us about a normal day, a normal week, and kind of what you do um, while you're here at Summit. Normal day, normal week. So I think of marketing as like, it's a lot like juggling, right? So I'm juggling a lot of different things, probably like any job, but so I'm kind of in and out of lots of different things all the time, working on some content. We do a lot of content marketing, working on social media, working on website projects, working on kind of one-off projects that come up. We need a new uh, new guide for something. We need a new, you know, some sort of marketing tool. So kind of juggling all of those all the time. What's the most important thing that we need to do right now? Um, you know, whether it's updating a website page, creating a, a new guide for a service that we're offering, you know, getting our, our social media content for the week, all of those types of things. Great. No, so obviously you're a, you're a busy person. So um, again, going with all those things, what do you feel is the most important um, aspect of marketing a CPA firm? And what, what is the one thing you do each day? You're like, if I don't do this well, then Summit's not going to succeed in our marketing strategy. You know, I think it's interesting. I listen to a lot of podcasts and when they talk about marketing a CPA firm, they often will talk about things that are different from what we do, very different from what we do. Because CPA firms are often location-based, right? So the marketing is often, you know, maybe not yellow pages, but like that would be the old, you know, worrying about, you know, placement in things like that. But also like advertising on Yelp or um, just other kind of local marketing. Summit takes a different approach because our clients are all over the country. So we have to kind of approach marketing on a bigger scale than that. You know, our our marketing is very, you know, Jody often talks about thought leadership, right? So kind of leading kind of in our arena, which is digital agencies and doing education-based marketing. So we do a lot of articles, we do a lot of you know social media content. We do a lot of speaking engagements, networking. I think that's a big one for us. So when you're talking about a, a typical CPA firm, I would say those might be slightly different. But if if a CPA firm is wanting to grow outside of their local area, then the networking and speaking are really big for Summit and websites. You know SEO. Uh, considering how people are going to find your website. If you're in, I don't know, Boston and you want to be reaching clients in California, how are they going to find you? So those are some of the things that I would say are are really important for CPA firms to be considering. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, well, early on, I guess, um, in our career and also other CPA firms that I work with and people that I talk to, you know, marketing just isn't a thing for most um, CPA firms. And when they do it, it's usually emails, it's newsletters, a lot of mailers. So it's typically driven towards like tax returns and and things of that nature, the traditional services. Like that's what I was used to. And I think that's what a lot of other other firms did. And then you would see this evolution where some people would put together websites. Everybody's website kind of looked the same, though. Um, there were some really good cookie cutter ones for CPA firms. And so... <laughs> 
with the mountain on yeah, with the mount, yeah, every, every, yeah, everything had, yeah, it all looked the same. Everybody had the same newsletter. And, and then all of a sudden I started, I did see a few that were doing like pay per click. And I think Kelly, you made a great point is like, if you're, if you're local, those kind of things are possible. You know, if you're just trying to like, if you have a really small footprint, you know, you can do some direct mailers, you can do some PPC specifically for what you're trying to do. But whenever your footprint is, you know, maybe nationwide, even state size, you know, that region, whatever that's going to be, if you found a niche that you want to work within, it's really difficult to, well, it's just not cost effective to to do a lot of that PPC, is it? Like if you wanted to do what we do nationally, it isn't, doesn't that have to be pretty directed? Yeah. Well, the pay-per-click advertising, I think it depends on what you're offering and, and what the return is going to be. In publishing, pay-per-click advertising is is big. For what we do for, you know, reaching digital agencies, pay-per-click is maybe less of a priority. It kind of depends on where your audience is and who you're trying to who who you're trying to reach. If we're, you know, and you could do pay-per-click advertising in different different locations, right? So you can do Facebook, you can do LinkedIn, you can do Google. You know, if you're trying to reach certain people on Google, pay per click advertising is great. Also, your SEO is really important. So, for us, we've seen that we focus on the content marketing and the SEO because we want to rank in the in the top, basically on the first page, right? For our target keywords, if we're not doing that, pay per click advertising might help us reach more people than we are without that. But the cheaper way is to build out some content, right? And then the pay-per-click stuff, I don't know about you, but either one of you, but whenever I see that stuff, whenever I Google something, everything that says add, 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 I just immediately like scroll right through it. It's frustrating (laughs) sometimes whenever like the whole page is nothing but ads, but I go straight to where that SEO stuff that you're talking about, where we're doing a lot of blogging and putting out content, where we're able to get some traction there. That's typically where I go anyway for content because those ads just feel like sometimes you're in this like weird trap. So I stopped uh, clicking on those things, you know, years ago as it related to that. So I think, yeah, I don't think you're alone in that. But, you know, it depends on your your product, right? Like if we're just selling one tax return and we're trying to sell one tax return to 5,000 companies, whatever, you're going to try to reach as many companies as you can with that ad. On the other hand, if your client is not just buying up one-time service or one-time product or something like that, they're bigger. I mean, our, our clients are paying for a lot more than a tax return, right? So that's a more of a long-term relationship. And I think that the marketing for Summit, what we do is a lot more building relationships and that takes more time and is more than just like a flashy ad on a screen. Right. Because we do take the education approach, which you know, I typically will tell any firm that I'm working with, that's kind of the way to go. Just become the thought leader, be able to be that resource for clients. Don't be afraid to give away too much information. It'll come back to you either with that particular client or they'll refer somebody that, hey, you should really talk to these folks. They're really good. I think that's important. But the only problem or challenge is it took us a while to build up our website and Absolutely. our reputation through all that stuff and pump out tons of content. And a lot of people don't have time to write articles and do all those other kind of things. So aside from like pay-per-click on Google, you know, I heard you mention like LinkedIn and Facebook and there's all these other platforms. You know, what's the word on the street there? What's the effectiveness and You know, what should people be if they're going to have like an overall campaign? Like, what should they be doing? What should they be paying for? That kind of stuff on that side. As far as like if they're doing pay-per-click advertising, where they should focus that? Yeah, well, I mean, like I need sales now. So what will happen is I'll work with a firm. And at first they're just like, hey, how do I you know, how do I deliver this VCFO service? So we kind of go through that whole thing and they're like, fantastic. Now, if they have a big book of business, it's easy to comb through there, grab two or three clients that would be a good fit. And then, you know, kind of cultivate business that way. And then slowly referrals come and then you get speaking opportunities. And at that time, they can like build up their website and their content and do those things at the same time. But some people need a faster path there they might not have a portfolio with a bunch of those clients. So it's like, hey, how do I get 
out there. I mean, I think VCFO services kind of sell themselves. Whenever you go out and you talk to your peers or you talk to bankers or whatever that are in your geographic location, but if they're like, hey, I just really want to pour some fuel on this thing. I mean, is it going to LinkedIn? Like, what's, I, I haven't heard in a long time. I've, I've been hearing some things about Facebook that the returns haven't been that fantastic for a lot of folks, but I know there's still a ton of money getting thrown at Facebook. So, I mean, for a B2B type of a, a relationship, I mean, is it Facebook? Is it LinkedIn? Is it depends? Again, it depends, right? Like, so again, when I was in publishing, Facebook was a really big platform. That's where our clients were. For Summit, Facebook, not so much. I mean, it, it, when people are on Facebook, in my opinion, it tends to be more on a personal of a personal nature. I'm looking at what you know my friends are posting, my family's posting, whatever. Even as a professional, you know, I have a, a personal life. Same with our clients. When they're on Facebook, they tend to be doing things that are more of a personal nature. Whereas when they're on LinkedIn, they're a little bit more in professional mode. You know, regardless of what time of day it is or what day of the week it is or whatever, they're more in professional mode. So for CPA firms who are trying to reach clients for whatever their niche may be, LinkedIn may be more effective for them. I think the key with pay-per-click advertising is whatever platform you're on, whatever, wherever you're finding your audience, that you know, you're know you testing different things. You're always trying different ads. You're trying different platforms because you may be surprised. Maybe you find out that the, you have a bigger audience on Twitter for whatever your target client base is. So it kind of depends on those factors. But I think the biggest key is to try different things and test different ads on different platforms and see what is working best for who you're trying to reach. Well, so I mean, well, you bring up a good point, though, because like marketing, unlike biz dev, you know, we always talk about those being in two different worlds, right? Like marketing to me, and correct me if I'm, you know, that's that's your lane, but it's more about like branding and traffic and those kind of things. So it's harder for me as an owner to then like justify or tie out things that maybe you're doing in terms of writing articles and doing the website and even doing some pay per click stuff, unless they're quick hitters like, you know, potentially tax return work, but these bigger jobs. And then quite frankly, I mean, maybe I'm just different, but whenever I get pounded and trolled on LinkedIn, I'm usually like, ignore, ignore, ignore. Oh yeah, totally. (laughs) Even though I know it's more about brand awareness. So if you're like, so it's not necessarily like trolling for leads, it's probably more of like promoting articles and content through your LinkedIn is really what you should be doing, I would assume, so that it gets people interested in that kind of stuff. But I don't know. Like, so how do you know whenever it's been effective, whenever it doesn't have like a direct tie? I mean, not to say that it can't, you know, you can have that funnel, but whenever it doesn't have that direct tie, what are some of the things that you look at to see if we're spending our time in the right spot? Right. So, yeah, I think that you make a good point about the like kind of the, the trolling that happens on, on LinkedIn. We don't want to be those people. I don't recommend that anyone be those people. You know, you get those LinkedIn connection emails, people are trying to connect with you, then they send you email after email. That's not the approach that I would recommend or that we take at Summit. I like to think of our social media as supporting all of our other efforts. So we don't spend a ton of time on social media necessarily, but our social media is always putting out the content that we're working on. We're developing all of this content. The content marketing, often what we're doing there is we're writing articles based on what what our clients are finding valuable, what we have seen our clients are finding as valuable through the events that we're going to. We're going, we're speaking, they're asking questions, we're listening, and we're developing content that's helpful to them. We're then using that content, we're putting it out there onto sites where our clients are, where our potential clients are, where people that are in our our niche are, and where they're going to find that content. And so when we, when we are reaching out to other sites to publish our content, we've written this article, we think it's great. We think it'll be really helpful for this audience. We are now using their platform to publish that content to reach a bigger audience than what we're reaching through just putting something out on LinkedIn or putting something out on Twitter. When they then share our content, then that's going out to their audience. We can then share that. And we're showing that those partnerships that we're developing over time. You mentioned earlier how it can take time. It just does. Developing those types of relationships and partnerships take time and developing content takes time. But those things are helping us reach a bigger scale. And so then it comes down to looking at the analytics. So 
yeah, we can put out one article and, you know, we don't necessarily know exactly how many people that may bring us, but we can look at the numbers. We can look at the growth on of our followers on our social media platforms. We can look at the number of viewers that we get, number of, uh, I'm, the word is escaping me, <laughs> sessions, <Yeah. laughs> sessions on our website. So the number of people that are coming to our website and looking at our content. We can watch those numbers over time. We can see how many people come in from a specific article or specific social media post. But sometimes some of those things are a little bit more fuzzy when it comes to marketing because something may, you know, you guys may do a podcast interview. You do those outside of this podcast. You are interviewed on another podcast and that might bring in traffic that we don't even know because they heard your name, they heard Summit, and then they search Summit, they find us online. But kind of watching all of those numbers and seeing how things are progressing over time is how we can see what's what's working well and what's not, what content is working the best, those kinds of things. So we're accountants and we want to see numbers. (laughs) So that's why most accounting (laughs) firms don't have big marketing budgets. Or if they do, like I said, it's, it's a lot of local bootstrapping. You know, it's just like promotional stuff or mailers and letters. But I can, you know, speak from our experience that it is a process and it's not one of those things where you see immediate results. But once you build it, what was that movie? Feel the dreams. You build it, they will come. Um, that's yeah. basically what marketing is. You just have to trust the system and then, you know, make sure you have a good vendor or somebody on your team that really understands, you know, what's going on like you do, Kelly. I mean, I think that you bring a lot of clarity to us sometimes where it's like, like you said, you're able to take the same content and spread it across five or six different channels so we can, you know, repurpose a lot of our content. And so you're not having to reinvent the wheel every time. So I think it's been huge. And there are a lot of people that we just had somebody actually this morning that reached out to us. And thanks to you, Kelly, they reached out to us and they said, hey, just wanted to know more about virtual CFO services, never really understood it or anything. Because I asked them, you know, how you found us. And they're like, well, just typed in virtual CFO services in Boston, Massachusetts, which none of us are in. And (laughs) um, we came up number one, two and like four, he said. He's yep. like, so after I read a couple of your articles, I was like, oh, I'll just give you a call. So yeah, it definitely I mean. works for sure. Yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, it's, it's funny. As I'm listening to you talk, Kelly, I realize how much I'm being marketed. You know, as, as you're talking about Facebook, I was thinking, you know, if I'm on Facebook and there's the greatest article or there's the best advertisement in the world for something that would help me as the director of accounting at Summit, I doubt I would click on it. Even if it's something I need, I just, my brain's not there. But if there's an article for the worst basketball product in the world, I'm clicking on it and I'm like, oh, I wonder if we could use this. And so it's it's definitely, you're in, a, you're in a different mindset when you're on Facebook. And again, if I'm on LinkedIn, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for articles to help me in my career. And same thing with Twitter. I, I definitely use Twitter in the for more professional reasons. So it's, it's funny as you were talking, I'm like, wow, I'm really getting marketed every day so much. So it's, um, it is funny. Um, But one thing you mentioned earlier, too, was how local CPA firms market a little bit different. And so I was thinking back to my days at Grant Thornton when I was in the Denver office and the, the requirements they had of me was, you know, I had to try to be on a board. Denver board. I had to try to, um, you know, go golfing with people once a month and stuff like that. And then also I had to try to speak locally and join different organizations. Um, So now that I'm at Summit, which like you said, is a distributed firm, there's still requirements of me as as a director or even when I was a CFO, but not the same type of requirements. Can you talk about that a little bit, how you use the team to help you with your marketing approach? So, sorry, how I use the team to help with the marketing, like as far as just getting them involved in the things that we're doing, is that what you Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you were talking about the local and it's true. You get involved in those local connections, right? Mm-hmm. And we're doing the same thing just on a different scale because we're connecting with right. these organizations all over the country. And so, yeah, I mean, you know very well, I reach out to the team all the time for, you know, I, I need a quote for this article or I need an, somebody to interview with this publication for some something. And so you guys are helping all the time with doing podcast interviews, doing um, just quick little interviews that, that get us mentioned in articles, that things that we, you know, then we're just kind of connecting with these organizations. Because we're a distributed company, we tend to connect a lot with some remote work type organizations also who want to hear from us on what we're what we're doing, how we're running a company with people all over the country and how, you know, what what kind of tools we have in place for that. So the team, I would say, is always helping with doing interviews. And I try to bother you guys the least amount possible. I'm not going to ask you to spend tons of time, but however, I can kind of quickly take little bits of your time to kind of put things out there to show that Summit is more than just Jody or just 
Adam or the speakers that people may see, you know, some of our team will go out and do speaking engagements and you'll meet people in person, but they don't realize there's, you know, 40 others of us behind the scenes. And so it's fun to just get different people from the team involved in those types of things so that people can see there is a whole team here and that there's a lot of us that are behind the scenes. No, that's great. And I definitely think it's it's been valuable to me. Like I said, I've seen the best of both worlds. I saw it in, in industry or in public where I was, again, going to different events, doing all that. And I, I do think what we do is actually, for me, a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun just, you know, talking to some for 15 minutes for an article or answering a question for you and giving you a quote. So I really do um, enjoy the the day-to-day of, of what we do in terms of um, how, the, how the team gets to help you out. And I do definitely agree. Like when I'm Whenever I see an article and I keep seeing the same name pop up from the same organization, you start to wonder, okay, is Jody the only person with brains in that organization or is there other people there that can, <laughs> that can, give, that can give help as well? So um, Just a big talker. Important. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like in some of these CPA firms, there's not very many people, but absolutely, if you can leverage the team, it, it definitely makes a lot of sense. But, you know, another question that I get a lot is uh, related to tools from a marketing perspective. And I know you do a lot of automation, but especially as it relates to like a, you know, a CRM or something like that. I know we use HubSpot, right? And that integrates, I don't know exactly how it works, but I know we use it to to manage our leads and some of the things that come in through the website and that kind of thing. I mean, what's some best practices when somebody's like trying to figure out what type of CRM or, or marketing tools they should be using? Yeah, we do use HubSpot. We use it to manage our website and our blog and and all of those things. So yeah, I think best practices for tools. I think with marketing, things move fast. There's always new tools that are out there. And it's important to always be looking at what's new that's out there. Because you can get stuck in using something and now there's this new thing out there. Or, I mean, just in general, to try new tools. I found that... I come across a new one and, and, and you know, sometimes... I'm going to call you out. Find, get, what's your tool of the, the month? And for like, tell me what so, area? Yeah, if somebody's listening, it doesn't matter. Just like marketing. the one that you couldn't... Li- <laughs> yeah, exactly. In marketing, what's the one tool outside of HubSpot? Because I know it's an amazing widespread platform for many things. Outside of HubSpot, what makes your life super easy that you couldn't live without? Okay, so t- my two current favorites. One is Canva, which I use to uh, create graphics. I am a marketing person, but I am not a designer. And so Canva makes it super, super easy for me to create really nice graphics without being a designer or having to pay somebody or wait for design, you know, graphics to come in because that could take some time. So I love, love, love Canva. The second one is Later, which is a social media media scheduling app. So I use that for uh, scheduling out our content. So I can kind of batch it. I can work for an hour and kind of schedule out all the content for this week, next week, whatever. I can create the graphics in Canva and then use Later to schedule them out. So those are my two current favorites. But that ask me again in a few months and I bet it'll be, it'll change because I am always trying new ones. So wait a second. When you send out those tweets at midnight, that's actually you doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She purposely does it that late. So <laughs> looks like she's still it hard like at work. I'm working. Yeah, yeah. How you guys Being fooled. <laughs> So, so real quick, I want to um, plug our email address. So um, we're always looking for new content. We're looking for questions. We're looking for people to come on and join the show. If you're interested, uh, please email us at cpa at summitcpa.net. Again, we're looking for anything into this email address. We want to um, keep the show moving. We want to make sure we're um, hitting the topics that interest you. So again, that email address is cpa at summit, S-U-M-M-I-T, cpa.net. So I wanted to throw that out there real quick. And we have a couple minutes left here. Is there anything in the marketing realm that we we have not talked about either Kelly or Adam that you guys want to make sure we get into this podcast. Yeah. I mean, I think that the other thing that you don't think about is the collateral and the material that supports you. So years ago, it was always like, hey, you had to have a website because it legitimizes you. That's the way a lot of these white papers and content are. And in fact, Kelly, you and I were having a conversation today. I was sending some stuff out to a prospect and I was like, cool, I need this like three page, you know, brochure basically to be able to tells everything about us, our history, the services we provide. And we have that. We have content like that at our disposal. And I can say that 
you know, marketing supports us in a lot of different ways. So on the biz dev front, we're doing all these different things. And then, as you said, they're seeing the content out there, they're reading the articles. So they're already coming to us with a little bit of knowledge. And then whenever we can turn around and then grab that piece of collateral and just kind of dust off or or put that finishing touch on a conversation is huge for us and for me. Great, great point. What about you, Kelly? Any uh, final thoughts for the listeners? Yeah, I think one thing that came up for me when we were talking earlier is I think of the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're marketing your CPA firm or marketing anything is knowing your audience. You know, you talked, Jamie, about, you know, you, if you see something basketball related when you're on football, I mean, football, when you're on Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're on Facebook, you see something basketball related, you might gravitate towards it, right? We know kind of who, what kind of content our audience is looking for. We know um, who we're going to reach on different platforms um, or how we're going to reach them, what what types of things kind of grab their attention. And I think that's the biggest thing, whatever niche an accounting firm finds, if you're looking for, you know, we want to serve this type of client, know that audience and meet them where they are. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate both your time. And uh, Kelly, I think you did an awesome job. We will definitely have you on here again to talk about more marketing topics as you did so well. So I appreciate both Kelly and Adam's time. And uh, thanks for uh, our listeners for joining us today. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Enjoy this episode? Visit our website at summitcpa.net to get more tips and strategies for achieving modern CPA firm success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry. 